Hey guys, this is Greg Fraser here again, just uh, answering a question about the front, middle, and back stance uh, in boxing. A lot of times when you have like sort of the MMA guys, you'll have this, what we call front stance, where they're sort of ready. It's almost like a wrestler stance, where instead you have like a wrestler stance, the hands are up, you're ready to shoot in, everything like that. The front stance, standard boxing stance is sort of a middle stance, okay? The front stance, what you want to do is create this V frame. All right. The advantage of the front stance is it allows you to square off your shoulders. Okay. You can close off the wrist, but I need to keep this closed V frame. All right. When I'm throwing from here, the great thing about that is it allows me to reach my opponent from either side. A lot of guys that use this are quick with their hands. Okay. You can turn the hips. You can move side to side nicely. Okay. With these bobbing and weaving ducks and so on. Okay. So I can get in here and I can also get in and shoot really quick, all right? Standard boxing one is kind of your middle stance. Your balance is balanced over between the two feet. I've changed the angle, so rather than this type of thing, you gotta get, instead of a V-frame here, it becomes more of an A-frame. This is where people make the biggest mistake, is they create the A-frame while flattening the shoulders, and you can see all of this opening. If I'm gonna use the A-frame, this lead elbow needs to protect that rib, okay? See how I've changed? Front stance in, ready to shoot, okay? Middle stance, I'm between the two feet, all right? When I'm in here, the elbow tucks, my body turns, my shoulder in, and I've reduced that angle, all right? Still have that A-frame, and I can deliver from here. It also reduces the angle of my body, all right? So we've got the front, front stance, V-frame, Okay, good for closing in, good for sort of a nice, what we call a juggernaut, walking in. Okay, the second one here, boxing, aim it off the rib. Okay, hands are nice and high, and you're working from here. Third one is my back stance, where I'm sitting here, where you see sort of a Mayweather, and we're using a windshield wiper. Okay, that allows me to get to now nice and low, be able to creep in on somebody, get from the body to the top. Again, let me reiterate what you're, what you're doing here with your elbows. On the front stance, where we're sitting here, you notice how the elbows are coming in. The reason for the front stance, if I'm squared off with my shoulders, that you want the V-frame, is that you can see I'm protecting my ribs and my center line, okay? I want to be able to close off. Also, when you get into grappling, somebody trying to take your elbow outside, it keeps those elbows nice and tucked in and increases your power base. Here we're back into the middle stance where you've again gone into your A-frame, brought your elbow into your body and changed the angle a little bit so my lean forward's ahead, okay? My hands are just about overlapping and you can see where the punches are coming from here, all right? Back stance is again where I'm sitting back here. I'm turning my right shoulder, my rear shoulder, okay, is drop ball back over a little lower than my lead shoulder, okay? The elbow's now coming across, covering my ribs here, which allows for floating punches. Really nice for getting that low rib to the high, okay, low to high, or high to low. It allows you to sort of tuck out, evade nicely, and be a great counter puncher position. I like this specific position for our street fighting and so on. If you're using this on, we're going against kickers, okay? Again, on this one, the elbow is now protected across the ribs. Don't leave it down here, okay? A lot of times an amateur, they'll call you if your hand's down below the waistline and so on. So you want to keep that nice and tucked. That allows you to float that punch out real quick, okay? Now, <clears throat> the other thing I really want to discuss is all these beginners, when you start punching, okay, your punches shouldn't come from your hands. A lot of people, if you're punching from your hands and you're throwing from your hands, what happens is I reach, okay? If I throw with my hands and I throw with my hands, try to throw, this is what all beginners do. They figure that they're gonna have to throw all their power. And when I do this, notice what happens. My chin goes above my knee, okay? Or past my knee here. Boom, I reach. Now I'm susceptible to get a nice hook, nice uppercut, all these things that can put me on my butt, all right? So again, when you're looking at this, if you're in your middle stance, again, you tuck this one back, almost sitting back, sorry, your front stance, 
You want to sit back. You want to load that as though you're re getting ready to be like a sprinter so you can really close the distance, okay? So up here, I'm working those short. I'm in, closed off a little wider stance, and I can close in here. In the middle stance, you really want to be on the balls of your feet, okay? Kind of a neutral spring back and forth, and I'm in here, but I'm not leaning into the punch. So when I throw my jab cross, for instance, okay? Again, you see a lot of this, people throwing with their hands. See how my body's falling forward? This is where I get in trouble. What you wanna do is let your shoulders go. Notice here, pivot. I'm turning the shoulders through. My hip comes into alignment with my hand. Pivot, all right? So I'm in here, pivot, pivot, all right? You don't see me falling forward on this. I'm not leaning back, okay? A lot of people I'll see is they'll try to pull themselves away. Well, then you lose the power to punch. So what you wanna do is find that distance and turn the hips through, okay? This is a great stance because it allows you to really move nicely, okay? You keep your distance and so on. If I wanna add the hook, okay? And I'm from here, one, two. Don't lean forward here. Use what we call a toe step. One, two, slightly toe step. And depending on the kind of hook, whether you're using a short hook, where you see how my forearm's level right here, I'm hiding behind my punch, okay? What this kind of hook does is it allows you to deliver maximum power because you can lock the shoulder blade and really turn into that bag, okay, or that person. The fish hook, which is your longer one, I'm coming out, the knuckles are reaching and then pulling back in, okay? This allows me to get around the back side of somebody's glove, around their forearm, catch the back angle of the jaw, and sort of spin the head, okay? Very nice sort of setup is 10 step, boom, okay? You got your long fish hook, step in, deliver the short. Third one is where we call floating hook, okay? You don't see this very often. I use a lot of my street things. This one, we're gonna plant the elbow right in to the body. And this is just brushing right in front of their chin, okay? This little cut right here in front of the chin, if you catch that, that'll spin that chin right over the shoulder. You do that and I guarantee you win, okay? This is a real quick, just a snap, almost like an arm muscle type thing. So you've got these three hooks, okay? You got your long, working my job cock. Long fish hook, okay? Step in, short, put it in the butt, cut, all right? It's just a little tip, guys, for the guys that were asking about uh, the three different distances of fighting for boxing.